this makes a refreshing change. You'll probably know that I quite like my industrial compo control components from China, and I usually get really enthusiastic over them. I'm not going to get so enthusiastic over this one, so let's see where it came from first. It came from a seller. Three position push button. It came from a seller called CGL3478, and it's called three position push button switch control button electric switch 3 amp 250 AC 600 volt max. And it costs a staggering £2.84. That is ridiculous. You know what? If I tried sending this back to China, just the cost of the postage would be £6.70. Even sending the empty box would cost me £4.50. So much more than what they can ship out with actual electrical switches and stuff inside it. So what don't I like about this? Well, there's a, it's got a kind of rough finish. I don't know, uh, you guys can let me know, is this a clone? of another product. A lot of the products that you get as industrial components are clones. It wouldn't surprise me if this was based this label on someone else's product. ZPB-3, 3 amp 250 volt AC. It's worth noting that, although that's probably the upper voltage rating, the 250 volts AC, 600 volts max, I would say from probing about in this that it's probably not really suited to low voltage use because of the quality. When you press the button here, it makes, well, I'll put it down, you can hear. So the buttons go down, if you press dead center, they go down fine. If you go off to the side and you press them, they kind of, they jam, and then they click down quite forcefully after the, you wiggle it. It's really not nice. It's the sort of thing that if you were, you went to press stop, I don't know if, if it makes contact that or not, but if you flustered and you went across an angle, it wouldn't stop until you wiggled your finger on it, which isn't really ideal. Let's pop the lid. Two screws hold it closed, which is reasonable enough. That's all it takes, really. So whip these screws out. Revealing inside quite a chunky assembly. Let's uh, get a wee bit closer to this. So it turns out that for every button, we do have a moving contact that goes from a normally closed position to a, I should I say, a normally open position to a normally closed position. Uh, no, that's wrong. A normally closed to a normally open position, which means that normally the stop button would be normally closed, so when you press it, it breaks the safety circuit or breaks the circuit that set, resets the contactors. So each of these buttons can have that function. It's a fairly universal thing. And if you consider, how much was this? £2.84 for what has quite an interesting assembly inside. But let's get the meter in. Hopefully this all has loosened up a bit since uh, I've been playing with it. So let's go between these normally open contacts and I'll push the button and it kind of makes, but it's, it's a bit scratchy. Let's try the next one. Yeah, you know what? I wouldn't trust this for low voltage use. You find that, uh, well, let's pop, let's take it to bits. You find uh, that, well, certainly I can tell you an industry that knows about this. Well, apart from the uh, factories and the maintenance engineers and factories will know this, and indeed lift engineers, particularly they'll know it, uh, elevator mechanics. Um, sometimes it's not advantageous to have, it's nice to have a low voltage control circuit from a safety perspective, but sometimes it causes lots of problems. And where you've got, a, say, for instance, an elevator with a lot of safety switches on the door contacts and the uh, all down the shaft, you've got all the contacts down the shaft in series, so that if any door opens, it breaks the control circuit and stops the lift running unless it's uh, on levelling. If they use low voltage down those, it get, it's a nightmare. You know, if they use 24 volts, unless they're really good switches, they will give continuous fault problems that the, the fix is to go and bang the switch or wiggle it or change it, ultimately, if it is wearing out. But uh, it just means that most elevators do tend to use a higher voltage. They tend to use mains voltage down those. That's worth remembering, just in case you decide for some reason to poke about with elevators. The contacts here, so there's the contact uh, that normally bridges those when you push it, and it, in its rest position, it's pulled against these back contacts. Oh, just out of interest, what's the... In, with these in their resting position, what's the continuity like?
Not very good, it's not... That one's con continuity. That one is not very continuous. So, see, that's what I mean. It just... Uh, if it was mains voltage, that slight resistive layer would actually be broken down. What, what are these made of, these contacts? Let's, uh, let's use the magnet on them and see. Are they made of steel? Oh, maybe I should have actually unscrewed that before I took it out. Oh, blimey. Yeah, let's uh, put it back in just to try and undo that. Oh, they've really tightened them up a lot. Good lord. That's going to defeat that screwdriver. Do you have anything more shittable? This will be too big. Okay, let's, uh, let's get that terminal out. They've been overzealous in the factory. So are these connectors brass? I hope they're brass. Let's bring in the great big magnet, which I keep in bubble wrap to avoid it magneting onto things and destroying stuff because it is really quite brutal. Well, that's good. That's reassuring that... Uh, that this is not... Am I detecting a very slight... I don't think so. I am detecting a slight steel content to that. I wonder what that alloy is. Okay. But the contacts themselves, they're not actual physical, like, silver contacts you wouldn't expect for that price. They're just dimples that have been pushed in. And the contact they're making uh, connection with is this. I'll zoom back down here. I really should zoom back in a bit just to just so you can see what's going on here. So if I undo the screw, there's the button at the back that you can ch change the logos in, I guess. Yeah, you can change the logos in those. That's quite useful. Shame they're shit. Uh, so there's the main spring that pushes the button back. Uh, what have we got here? There's another spring that has just popped out. This is why it was probably quite scrunchy. Because the thing that's pushing this contact down uh, is a spring, so that as it makes contact the bottom bit, it, that when it's in it, the normally closed position, the screw here is sprung up and it's holding that tight against contacts like this. When you actually push it down, uh, this spring is what pushes it down, so that it goes down and then I think the clicking is actually the fact this is just a screw that's actually just catching the edge of that it is because you can actually feel it grating and clicking. Hmm, it's not great, is it? And is this just another bit of uh, brass, I guess? Again, very slight magnetic attraction. Is that just residual steel from... Or I think it's an alloy and it's got little bits of... Uh, yeah, that's odd. Very strange. And then the contacts at the bottom again, just little domes in this sort of... This alloy, whatever it is, feels very light. Now let's file it. I think this is its base colour. I don't think it's got any coating. It is. It's just a sort of brassish alloy with stuff in it. So ultimately it'll work, but it is, it's not got proper contacts. It is just basically relying on a piece of brass bridging other brass domes. I suppose we could, you could say they are technically contacts. But it, it feels crunchy and it will work, but it's not really what I'd call my favourite device. I mean, it will work as a little call button thing. Uh, and it looks the part, it'd be great as a prop piece. Yeah, that would be quite good as a in set dressing in a sort of industrial environment. But uh, when it comes to the crunch, it's not something I'd choose to use in a sort of a mission-critical application.